Hello and good morning. Welcome to this webinar. Um, we're taking again the opportunity to inform you about uh, Amable, about what we try to do and what uh, options you have um, through the open forum. So uh, we're going to run a set of slides uh, with an explanation and there's a chat opportunity that you can use uh, in order to put some questions on us and we'll try to respond to them. Uh, please be aware that whatever we you might um, respond to your questions that might be made public. Um, we want to look for equal opportunities. Um, so um, that's also the reason why we have some frequently asked questions on the website um, to inform people and to bring all this uh, additional information um, to everyone that has an interest in the open course. Now, having said that, um, there are currently a few calls open, and I will later on explain um, most of them. Um, the first one, product idea pitches, is an opportunity where you can present a as a manufacturing idea, get some feedback from experts, get feedback from participants of the experience labs, um, and we support you in presenting and preparing the presentation and uh, elaborating the idea with 1,000 euros. Um, the second opportunity is COVID-19, uh, so we are currently writing up uh, what we call a challenge set, that is um, challenges that we see, that we formulated, um, that need to be addressed by the product idea. And if you present us a product idea against these challenges, then you can receive up to 10,000 euros if you're selected for support and our experts will help in realizing such an idea. Uh, what is um, most important and where I want to say deadlines coming up is um, additive manufacturing and logistics and production. That's on the bottom line here. That's uh, what we call open call five. There we tend to fund one or two experiments um, on AM and logistics and the budget for this call is 100,000 euros. The deadline is August the 1st. So it's about one and a half weeks still to go. Short general statement. Um, as I say, the webcast is informative only. Um, if you need real information that is, um, let's say, formally um, signed off, then you have to look into the guide for applicants. That's the um, list down there on this set of slides. You also find on our website the proposal template and also the contracts template that we would later on file with you if you get selected. Um, the webcast will be recorded and um, as I already said, if you send us text messages, um, we may publish them um, in the frequently asked questions section. Now, what are we talking about in Amable? We are talking about functional parts, so not about things for the desktop, but parts that are really used in environment. First example here is the end of a motorbike fork. Um, this has been designed to preserve or to, 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 to give additional functionality to the steering capability of a motorbike, so to make it light but also stiff. So it's two functions that this part fulfills, and it has led to a weight reduction and it has increased the rigidity of the steering and um, so bringing about benefits to a functional part. Another functional part that we also show on the website is this uh, cartridge uh, to pick up the sound from the vinyl disc. Um, this also is um, in the conventional manufacturing side um, a part that is being manufactured of a number of sub parts which all need to be assembled and again if the sound quality is the thing that is the main objective and the weight um, then the stiffness of an relatively manufactured part again brings about a benefit to the entire uh, product so this as well is somehow a, a functional part now if we talk about offerings from Amable. Um, then we find most of that in the services arena. 
And there's a second aspect of Amable that is the digital data chain. So starting with the explanation to the first one, we have brought together offerings from or the support from business, from technology and skills and education into those services. All these services though have a connection to the business aspect, have a connection to technology developments for to, to the implementation and also want to train you. So these services that we provide are targeted to increase your capabilities. They are not meant to provide the solution, but more to bring you to a level that you can build the solution yourself and later on take another idea on your own to the final stages. Now, we don't mind where you enter these services if you are in concept stage, so if you're still thinking about the idea, if you already, for example, have a construction and just want to print, we might always need to jump back to another stage. But basically, if you go just for one stage or multiple stages, that's absolutely up to you. What the practical part is, is that the guide will lead you through the services journey. So we pick you up, bring you to the individual services that you need, and we discuss together with you what the next step will be and what's necessary to um, tackle the changes that we have. Now, this, for example, is one of the services. Um, it's called Visualization Immersive Design. And if you look down on the service key benefits, then it is ability to realistically visualize a product. So if you need to understand its functionality, if you need to discuss with someone the functionality, then this visualization is something very helpful. Another benefit, for example, here is um, direct involvement of customers for feedback during the design phase. Another service which I show here is Design for AM. Service key benefits of this one is to have a cost-effective design. So once you transfer your idea into a construction, then you might need to think about post-processing. You might need to think about how to best integrate or how to best realize functionality through design. It does not only include um, the ge geometry of the part, um, it also includes, for example, the reduction of material, if possible, so to remove not needed material in order to increase the printing time, but sometimes perhaps also to add some material in order to make the printing process more robust. So that's de-risking the build, that's the second key service benefit. Um, all of this aims then to bring you to a construction um, that is printable, and that is reliably printable because that's two different kind of things. Now, if we talk about data, then along this development, along this, these different phases, you will always create some sort of data, uh, be it a construction file, or if you do a simulation, for example, the result of the simulation. So where are the highest loads? Where are only low loads in the part? so that I could remove material. And we created this um, digital data chain in order to enable people to, at the very beginning, already try their idea. So, for example, you make a short sketch on paper, you scan it, you create a PDF, and you can document that you had this PDF at that time. Because at any later time in the development process, or once you go to the market, you might want to prove that it was you who invented this product, so who has the intellectual property rights of this product. And the mechanism that we try to do that with is we have a blockchain where you can file in what we call a fingerprint of your PDF file. So you don't have to hand over the PDF file, but you run it through a small application that application creates a fingerprint and this fingerprint is loaded into the blockchain. So with this process, you keep the data file 
with yourself. You only hand over the fingerprint of that file. And the key benefit of this fingerprint is that this fingerprint of that's called hash key, this, this fingerprint identifies your file, but it doesn't give any detail about the content of that. That's point number one of this digital data chain. Point number two is that this software runs on what we call the Emerald RDS connector. This is um, a connector um, based on the international data spaces principle. So each of these connector softwares has a clear identification, which is linked to your company or to your person through a digital certificate. And for every time that you transfer data, you transfer it from your place to another place. But you know that the other place is person A, B, or company A, B, or C. So what you see on the screen is this, you keep the data on your computer. If you need to transfer it, then you transfer it, for example, to the service provider. So you know where you're sending your data, and it is transferred with a secure transmission to a securely identified counterpart. So once your service provider has done the work, be it conducting a simulation, the service provider is going to transfer back his result to you. So this ensures that if you hand over your data to someone else, it really arrives there. And once the result comes back to you, it is documented that this result came from this service provider. Now, if you bring that together with the blockchain idea, again, if you write down this fingerprint from these files that have been transferred, then again, you can document what result you had at that time and what came back from your service provider. So altogether, this framework of the digital data chain is an opportunity to enable distributed work and to have a safe data transfer between parties. This is going to be available um, after the summer. We're currently running tests in with a smaller group of people. So if you're interested in that, contact us and let us know that you want to try out. We, I'm always saying we, but there's a number of um, research centers across Europe. So you see here, all of them listed in one slide. And these, let's say, technology people stand on the support of that data management partners, which currently is Atos and the International Data Spaces Association. And on the business side, it's Team Goal and Strategy N, which is a Pricewaterhouse um, company, um, together with Zabala, which is doing innovation consulting. And for the training bit that we offer, um, we have EWF in the consortium. So that is the people that stand behind Amazon. Now, open call five, very specific now. Uh, what do you have to do? You have to have some, some sort of an idea of what challenge you're currently seeing with doing out of manufacturing, but having a lack of data transfer or a lack of logistics um, running smoothly between production stages, for example, or at the very beginning, in order to have material delivered. So anything that is connected between production stages that uh, targets or that would be helped by um, logistics, um, then you have a challenge. You can get the support uh, from Amable for the services that I already told you, uh, on design, testing, simulation, scale up, etc. Um, be it even industrialization, one of the services. You can look up these services in our services written on the website. So it's available there. Then you can get funding um, for development activities. Um, you need to be either an SME or a mid cap in order to receive funding in the role of a supplier. Um, and you need to be eligible under Horizon 2020 rules, so it's the European Research and Funding. We need to write up your story 
point number one, how does the idea relate to the state of the art? So we won't fund commercial activities that are already available out there, but it needs to be a challenge that is new, new to your area, or at least new to the situation where you're in. I think you present a business case, so where will you sell, how will you produce, and what will be your return of investment? So to show that there's a real market behind that, that you will be able to gain money from that activity, from, from the anticipated solution. Um, this can even be that you will be able to produce cheaper or better, or that it will be able to produce in your area rather than having to outsource to another area. Um, so please interpret this not only as to open up a new market, but also to enable manufacturing if you get the additive manufacturing and logistics, logistics challenge solved together. Um, you will have to write a development plan, um, so identify the risks that um, you might have on that road, um, the success factors, so what makes up your solution, uh, when will you be successful to identify and clearly describe that. Um, yeah, and then only you need to follow the guide replicants um, to use the written. As I said, there is this template available that you can fill in. It's a word, uh, Microsoft word, uh, that you can use for writing the application. Um, and then submit the proposal. That's being done by email to the creator, to the applicants, and back to us. Now, um, the effort that we expect in additive manufacturing is about 60% and the effort in logistics about 40%. Um, this is to supply, uh, to apply to Amazon. Um, the LPRMS deadline already has passed. So if you should have 40% effort in additive manufacturing, but 60% or even more in logistics, then, it, uh, then I guess we can't take your proposal. However, if it's more related to additive manufacturing, but also significantly need logistics than apply to the open core by from them. We're talking about something that we call best practice experiment. Um, so this product that needs additive manufacturing, um, the product chain that needs physical energy to the logistics to, <laughs> to produce the product. And now the team that should apply is definitely a supplier. So the one that wants to supply the solution or the product, um, uh, we need uh, supply of the logist of a logistics solution uh, if you can't do it yourself. But we would recommend to have someone from the outside somehow that provides you, be it robotics or be it um, a vehicle, an automated vehicle, um, or be it uh, an IT solution that um, will need some work in order to transfer data according to your requirements. What's definitely needed as well is a user of the product. So you will have to bring in a first user um, who defines what the product is about and um, also helps you um, to develop the solution to the target. And there might be a fourth party that, um, as I said in the beginning, uh, we're expecting either one very good um, project so that consumes 100,000 euros or a um, project that, uh, or, sorry, or two projects um, which we can support with 50,000 euros roughly. Now, the evaluation process will take part um, with external experts, um, together with internal ones that's also written in the guide for applicants. Um, we will come up with a list according to the rules that are set out in the guide for applicants. And the proposal evaluation criteria are also listed there are impact, accidents, and quality and efficiency. Um, they are all equally weighted. Um, once we've done the evaluation, we, you will receive feedback um, stating if you pass the threshold or not. And in the second stage, we will then rank the proposal itself. Named above. 
um, and then select the most appropriate ones. What is financial support for third parties? It is a mechanism to allow us to support you without um, having the European Commission in the middle. So we will create a contract on behalf of the um, European Commission with the third party of the third parties in that experiment. Um, so Fraunhofer will create a contract with you guys once you've been selected. You will collaborate with the consortium partners and you will have to report to us to, so that we can report back to the European Commission. The deadline is August 1st, 1700. Uh, the total budget of this call is 100,000 euros. As I say, we would love to have two projects there. Funding rate is 70% uh, of political costs, so it means direct cost without overhead. And there's uh, an overhead coming on top of 25%. So if you give us your direct cost, then we will do the retrofit calculation. That's also given the direct cost. Your experiment should be with respect to technology rating levels between four and eight. So it should somehow not start with basic research and it should not go to real production. Uh, so take a good starting base and make sure that you will have a solution that can be demonstrated in the end. And then you're fine. Um, the duration of that experiment uh, is given with four to 12 months. I would wonder if you make it in four, but you should not um, really have like 12, uh, rather um, a bit shorter um, than 12 months in order to account for delays that we currently see, for example, through COVID-19 um, effects. Um, so it would be good if you could realistically um, propose a duration uh, to finish off within 12 months. Call documents, you find those on the annual.eu slash calls. Um, and the submission inquiry is run to, by, by email to oc5 at annual.eu. And that's what I wanted to talk about. I checked if there are any questions. Yes, there's again one to funding. So, um, we support companies based on direct costs. So if you have an employee um, that um, wants to work on that project, then you have to have the direct cost of that employee um, calculate the person months that uh, this person will need to do the work and then write up that figure. Uh, we will um, take 70% of that uh, add 25% overhead, and then this will be the funding that you will be offered. Now, um, you won't be able to fund equipment from those um, support costs. Uh, we will fund consumer goods. Um, but as I say, uh, depreciation um, or buying equipment is not part of the game for, for, for this activity. So you should run all your existing equipment. Um, the other thing about cost is subcontracting. We have seen quite a few proposals um, that um, use considerably services from outside. That is also something we don't want to see. The guide for applicants, I think, states 15% of the funding per party uh, is uh, somehow a maximum for subcontracting. Um, so if you need something like post-processing that you can't do yourself, fine. But please make sure that the effort that goes into this post-processing within the scope of your activities is less than 15% of the total. And another question again is um, on universities. Uh, universities are not eligible uh, we really want to support SMEs, and that's why eligibility is uh, limited to SMEs and uh, mid-caps, um, so industry, 
um, is not in scope of this report of this leader. Um, another question is if there will be any future um, open calls. Yes, uh, we are currently planning another open call um, for some time after, uh, after the summer which will be our so-called open call six. Um, this will allow people to apply again for funding. Um, so that would be another opportunity. And the future one is we currently not planned to have such a strong focus on logistics. So it's again planned to be more on additive manufacturing challenges for functional parts. Might be that there's a digital challenge in addition to what we currently did, um, but as I say, it's uh, not going to repeat this logistics topic with a, such a strong focus. Okay, there are currently uh, functional parts. Yes, functional parts, again, functional parts is something that is not really precisely defined. And I gave you this sheet um, on one of the screens um, saying, um, that the evaluation will be done externally. Um, the rules for the evaluators that judge your proposal um, are precisely the same as in the guide for applicants. And the guide for applicants expresses that the product needs AM to become alive and that it should be a functional part. So whatever you consider as a functional part, please argue for it. <laughs> I can't tell you, and we are not allowed to tell you if it if things that you propose are um, functional in our sense. We have the examples on the web, um, which I just uh, presented. You can also run through our cases section. There you see proposals where or is running experiments uh, where functional parts are being addressed. Uh, so if you fall in any of those areas, if you see that um, those things are pretty similar to what you have in mind, then just go for it and argue that this product that you propose is functional. Okay, so if there are not any questions, any, any additional questions, and I would like to close for today, you will find the uh, webcast recording on our website as you find older ones, uh, the, the previous ones, to make it that way. And there are also other languages available on our website. Um, so if you would prefer to listen to other people who perhaps explain it a bit differently, uh, then just go ahead there. Please remember always, guide for applicants is the one thing that you should refer to. Um, the webcasts are only informative. So, thanks for attending. Um, wish you good luck um, to prepare your proposal. Um, if you send in a proposal that is perhaps not perfect, don't worry, you get feedback. You get feedback from the evaluators. So if you would like to resubmit it at a later date, um, then you can just go for this later date again. But um, if, you, if, you submit, if you submit now, then you just have the opportunity um, to enhance your idea, to enhance your proposal, and to have a greater chance in one of the later um, reports. Thanks for now, and goodbye.